Hi, welcome to Painting of the Week. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we have a short but somewhat challenging episode because we are going to be looking at a piece of conceptual art. Um, it does take the form of a painting, but it's going to be really important that we keep in mind that at the end of the day, this is a piece of conceptual art, um, and it's going to kind of it's going to kind of exercise our our brain for that reason. The artist that we're discussing today is none other than Jeff Koons, who is a very successful and somewhat controversial figure in the art world. He's a conceptual artist, and conceptual artist by default is challenging and somewhat controversial in and of itself. Uh, I want to preface our episode by making two quick points. The first one being that I am by no means interested in disparaging Jeff Koons in this episode. Uh, that's been done to death already. I think that that's a relatively low resolution angle to take when we look at this work. Me, a couple years ago, I maybe would have been inclined to take that low road. For, for reasons that are going to kind of be self-evident here, um, this work is frustrating, it's challenging, it's not obvious that it's ethically sound, it's all of these things, um, and, it, and that's what a conceptual work of art is going to kind of sometimes do anyway. The second point that I want to make is that it's going to be really important that we have a working functional definition of what conceptual art is and what it isn't when we look at this next piece. Um, so conceptual art is a form of art where the idea is the most important aspect of the work. Who made the work? How it's made? What materials are present? Uh, these are all subordinate factors to the idea itself. They're details. They're they're not to be scrutinized the same way that we typically are going to be inclined to do when looking at art. Um, one really good example of this, kind of the most recent quintessential work of conceptual art that went viral was the, the banana that was duct taped to the gallery wall that we all know about and that probably got, got, a, got a response from us. Um, it's, it's frustrating, it's irreverent, it's silly. Uh, but yet it's still really expensive. So this is this is kind of going to be the context in which we're going to look at this next piece. So the painting that we're looking at today is part of Jeff Koons' Gazing Ball series in which he has had a blue, highly reflective orb placed in front of a, a large handful of um, masterworks from Western art history that have been uh, replicated by studio assistants. Uh, this, this happens to be a painting by 17th century Dutch painter, uh, Baroque painter, Peter Paul Rubens. I do love this painting. I did choose this painting intentionally. I think that there's a valuable kind of appreciation moment here, which is that uh, in, in the 1600s, Peter Paul Rubens painted this picture uh, and you figure that he didn't, he, w he wasn't able to have a tiger sit for him in the studio, um, but yet here he is, he's painting a tiger mid-action. That is quite an impressive feat. It's, uh, it's anatomically sound. It's in this larger brawl with other figures and animals. Um, I just want to make the point that if you were to type into the, the best AI image generators that we have right now, um, Tiger jumping on man, on horse, in brawl. Uh, our best software could not come up with this image. Uh, this, this painter achieved, achieved this picture uh, 500 years ago. So I just wanted to say that. I mean, I just, you just have to stop and appreciate that fact. Um, so Jeff, Co Jeff Koons took this work of art from 500 years ago he had a small army of studio assistants very meticulously replicate, replicate the art. And then he places this, this reflective orb material uh, in front of the painting. And now it's, now it's a Jeff Koons work of art. Um, I think the orb is somewhat self-explanatory um, of a device. I mean, it, it reflects us. So we're looking at the work. 
and the work looks back at us, at least the orb looks back at us. So now we're kind of playing this perceptual game where I'm looking at myself, look at the work, it, it places me in the painting, it places me in the larger context of art history. At least that's what Jeff Koons will say. Um, and that's what the ball is literally doing. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing my reflection in the ball. Um, it's very conveniently Instagrammable, I would imagine. Um, and I'm sure all these things were considered. Uh, so, that's the set of facts. Uh, painting replicated by other painters, device, reflective device, placed in front of painting, work of art, complete. Um, what do we think about that? I used to have big, strong opinions about this. Now, I think I'm able to just appreciate that this work can exist alongside this work. I mean, I think the, the constellation of art is infinite, and complex and I'm able to recognize that like this can have a space next to all the other types of work that are of art that are made. I mean I happen to not love this the same way like I love the original painting. I mean they're just not the same. Um, but what do you think? It's interesting. I mean I, I think two, I'll close with two things. Um, my wife Magdalene said to me and I, I really like this. She said, if I have to read a paragraph to understand what I'm looking at, for me, this work of art fails. And I don't completely disagree with that. Um, so we could, we could take that approach. I think the other approach we could also take, and maybe we can, we can reconcile both of these points, um, is that the, the, the piece starts a conversation. So perhaps it's successful in that regard, um, that we're now, we're dedicating an episode to this, we're having a conversation. Um, it's probably, you're probably like maybe wrestling with how you feel about this the same way I have wrestled uh, with this series for a couple of years. So in that, in its most base response that it elicits, uh, it is a successful work of art um, a, a, across that metric. But I'm genuinely, I'm very curious to see what you think. DM me, uh, drop a comment. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, this is an open conversation. This is, it's not obvious what this is or isn't. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.